Hello my lovely year 11s and welcome to February half term and I always find it's about this kind of year that things start to feel a bit real. Especially since uh, like last week we had the advanced information released for the exams and um, if you haven't seen my two videos on that um, they're linked down below so you can go and check those out. Um, so this is what you should be doing at half term. Now you may have mocks coming up after half term that you need to revise for, but what I want you to spend the main focus of your time uh, over this half term is kind of like in an admin organisation role sort of thing. So we now know which topics are not going to be on some of the exams. So what I want you to do is to take your knowledge checklist if you don't have those already you can get them free from my website or you can use the contents guide of your revision guide or your teacher might have given them all to you already and say look that topic that I didn't actually know very well isn't going to be on the exam brilliant massive tick for me um I don't need to worry about that too much at all or that topic that I really don't understand at all that's going to be a big, big part of the exam, so I need to spend more time revising that. Now, as I said yesterday, even if a topic isn't listed as being one of the major focuses on the, the exam, then you still need to revise it, because it might be in like a low tariff or a linked question, and the major focuses might only cover 60, 70% of the content in the exam, and we don't want to throw away the rest of the marks by not bothering to revise them. But... You don't need to spend probably as much time revising them as you do for the stuff that is your major focus. So what you need to do is to start planning, start being smart and start being organised. So take the stuff that is the major focus of the exam, take your important subjects, the ones that you know you have to have to get the really good grades on, so we're talking about your English, your maths, and then whatever you need to get onto the course for next year. For example, if you're going on to do A-levels next year and they say you need um, like sevens or above in these subjects, they would be your high priority subjects. And the subjects that you're not carrying on to next year, wherever if you got a four or a five, and nobody would really care, they would be your low priority subjects. We do not want to spend as much time revising those as we want to spend revising our high priority subjects because those are the ones we really need to get the grades in and of the high priority subjects we need to focus on the major focus of the exams for that. If you're still not sure what is the major focus for your exams look in the description there'll be a link to my website where I've gone through taking all the really long complicated exam board documents and broken it down simply for you and then what you need to do is to start planning out your time now there are three ways that you can plan out your time um they are three completely different ways but I still think planning is really really important so another thing that is completely free over my website are some revision timetables that I've planned and made out for you you can just print them off and then do what I tell you to on that day. Um, they start in January so we are a little bit behind but there are like catch up days and rest days where you can fill in those gaps or if something on there is not listed on the exam then you can just cross that out. Another thing you can do is to use one of the study panels that I designed so they have, oh look here's one, different times down the side so it will fit in with your life because not everyone gets home from school at the same time and some people have like tutors or piano lessons um a subject tracker down here which is really important so it will make sure that you spend more time doing your high priority subjects um and less time doing the low priority subjects and you can actually count the number of hours you spend on each subject but if you went through and fill this in for the next few weeks then you'd be able to make sure you were spending more time on the major focuses of the exam Another thing that you can use to plan out your time and is zero, well a tiny, tiny little bit of effort, but basically zero effort, is get the ADAPT app. Now it's really good because all you need to do is to, you know, log in, tell it what exams you've got. If you don't know when the exams are, there is a link in the description down below to the calendar on my website where I put the exams in for you. And then ADAPT will just plan out your revision for you and it will tell you what to do on what day and then you can just go away and do it. You don't have to do any thinking at all. We are trying to make this as easy as possible 
for you so that you can focus on revising so that you can focus on looking after your mental health so you can focus on all of the other stuff that is going on in your life because planning out revision shouldn't be something that you worry about you just need to worry about your revision and then once you've worked out what the major focuses are which which you're going to like spend more time on revising once you've planned out your revision then we can actually start to spend some time revising now i still don't want things to ramp up too much we're still not at the point where we do loads of papers yet we're going to save that for a little bit you can start to throw in a paper maybe like once a week to get the practice in, to get the experience of doing exams in. And actually exam papers are a really, really good way to work out your weak areas because they will say like, this, this was a massive question, you know, by the time you get to end a paper you're just getting everything wrong and those are the, like, the hard questions. So maybe think about starting at the end of the paper. But what I want you to do is to pick a topic, spend 20 minutes learning about that topic. That's either like watching my videos or looking up in your notes or looking up in a textbook or whatever. Make notes about it. Spend 20 minutes doing short answer questions. So multiple choice questions on my website, retrieval questions, any short answer questions that you've been given. And then spend 20 minutes doing long questions on it. So can you do an extended response question? Can you do an exam paper question? Look a multi-step question in an exam so really focus on some of the major focuses in the exam focus on those topics and spend a bit of time like becoming an expert in it so learn about it do some short answer questions and then go do some long answer questions as well some more in-depth questions can you take everything you've learned can you take all the short answer questions and build it all together it's really important between each of these 20 minute sessions that you go and have a little break and that could be something as simple as like going and making a cup of tea or going to the toilet just don't go from one straight into the other your brain wants to do something else not just sit at your desk all day and it is really important that you get some time off to revise and it is really important that you get some time off to relax because after half term is when things start to kick up a notch when things start to feel very close when things start to get very serious it will generally be within this half term where you will finish the course um and then after easter will be all about revision but if you can spend this time planning what you're going to be doing working out if any of the areas of major focus on the exam are actually your weak areas um and even if they're strong areas don't feel you can just like forget about them you still need to revise those as well and you still need to revise everything on the exam um so good luck guys i'm going to be here with you every single step of the way ouch This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.